Good afternoon and welcome to today's candid webinar on unknown facts about black box. I am Prasanna, co-host of the event today. Let me introduce today's presenter, Mr. Vishal Shah, CEO and co-founder of Sinasoft Technologies. He is known as seasoned technology stalwart, an inventor of specific patented technologies, a writer, a serial entrepreneur, an investor, and importantly, a go-to guy for MSMEs. Black Box is his brainchild. The webinar is, un is about unknown facts about Black Box. In this candid interaction, Vishal sir will reveal interesting facts about Black Box that are largely unknown. It will be an engaging session on failure stories, customer persona, less known features, hidden technologies, buyback policy. If you have any questions while you watch this demonstration, kindly write in question and answer tab in the bottom of your Zoom login. The panel will take up the questions at the end of the session. Alternatively, in case you want to ask any question in the end of the session, you may please raise your hand and we shall activate your microphone to ask the question. Vishal sir, can you please take it ahead from here? Good afternoon all. So my pleasure to see you all again. Uh, we are getting extremely good response to uh, these webinar series. And uh, as Prasanna has light, rightly mentioned, this is a quite an unusual topic. You know, it is all about unknown facts about black box. Uh, we are not. Uh, uh, we, we are trying to be very humble uh, on this. That uh, black box has done very well. At the same time, there are so many interesting unknown facts which we thought that our customers, our prospects, our partners uh, should know. Uh, so it is all about a product story of black box. So today's session is going to be about it. Uh, I request everyone to take a poll just for my, uh, uh, you know, understanding what is the composition of our audience. And after that, we will start the webinar. Uh, Prasanna, can you please launch the poll? Yeah, so as I see on the screen, 27% uh, of the attendees are enterprise owners, 45% of the attendees are IT professionals working uh, in IT department. And uh, there are 27% of the people uh, who are IT vendors and, uh, you know, uh, okay, so this is a very interesting composition of the audience and uh, now we will start with today's uh, uh, webinar. So uh, basically uh, what we want to uh, know today is about unknown facts about the black box. So we have divided this particular uh, webinar in three different parts. One, uh, I'm going to tell you what uh, made us think about black box or how this idea was conceived. Then I'm going to share the failure stories. You know, we started with this idea, we developed few versions of the product and those products miserably failed. So uh, I'm going to express, uh, um, you know, our uh, sense of learning, you know, uh, from those failures. After that, uh, we will also understand the customer persona. It is a very niche customer persona for this particular product is designed. And this niche customer persona actually exists in a very, very large uh, numbers. So that is how uh, this particular product has done really well, though it is considered as very unorthodox product by the IT pundits, I would say. Uh, 
then we will also uh, look at certain uh, features and certain patents which uh, Synersoft uh, owns, um, you know, as a part of uh, the technologies being used in this particular product. So I'm going to make it very interesting session and it is mostly about storytelling and I hope it will be interesting for all of you. So let us first uh, start with our vision. So in 2008, we started this company. Um, we are three founders and uh, uh, all three founders are <clears throat> having relevant experience in different fields. Like I uh, mostly had a technical uh, uh, department and take tech decisions. My uh, uh, colleague Sudhir uh, takes most of the commercial decisions and my colleague Chirag takes most of the process and operations related decisions. So we started with a vision and it is very interesting. Uh, when we uh, started this company in 2008, uh, we had a vision that next two decades would be of digitization. So when we talk about digitization means it is all transformation of physical assets to digital assets and rightly we have observed witnessed all those digitization um, 20 years back we were keeping share certificates in our cupboards now they are in our demet account. Uh, 20 years back, we could see large drawing boards, uh, you know, uh, in, in any architects or structural design office and where draftsmen were uh, drawing on those drawing boards. Now we have AutoCAD. So digital uh, transformation has happened so rapidly. In 2008, uh, we had this vision that digital transformation is going to happen. And our focus was on small and medium enterprises. Now, this particular small and medium enterprises, as we understand that they are either exporters or they are suppliers to large enterprises. So because they were small, uh, we were not convinced that they would be exempted from the process of digitization. They would be forced to uh, adopt digital uh, assets. They would be forced to adopt IT, uh, not because they uh, are small or big, but because they are associated uh, with either the overseas companies or they are associated with uh, large enterprises as suppliers. Uh, they would be required and they would be expected of complying all those information security and digital asset management uh, uh, infrastructure. So we thought that in next 10 years, SMEs who were not very savvy about IT, who were not very uh, adoptive about IT, would be forced to adopt information technology so fast that they will face many challenges. They will face the challenges to preserve their data so that they can continue the business. They'll face the challenges to preserve their or protect their data from leakage or theft so that they can remain competitive. So this was our vision. And uh, the target segment which uh, we focused on was large, very large. In those days, uh, MSME board's website was listing around 36 million MSMEs registered in India. Uh, and, and in the world, it would be that number is really, really large. So we thought that a large segment of the economy, um, and interestingly, these SMEs are basically largest employment creators. They are uh, largest taxpayers. They are, uh, I would say, a largest contributor to our GDP. These SMEs are going to, uh, you know, uh, be adopting information technology. So if they are facing any challenges, you know, that would have a very very large impact on the economy, on the state of employment. So we had this vision that let's develop a product for MSMEs and uh, that could be a winner product. Now, why should we develop a product specific for MSMEs? Because there were already IT products available for data protection uh, from loss, leakage and theft. We realized that uh, most of these products are designed and developed by very large companies, you know, uh, the giants of IT industry. And they have designed this product to work at a scale. They have designed these products with an expectation that it will be used by a qualified IT personnel. Now, here was the catch, and that convinced us that we can really do well in this particular product. And that was the catch was that any IT product, if one wants to adopt, it has to be done 
with the help of IT talent or with the help of, you know, very uh, professional IT service. Now, these SMEs are actually not so IT savvy. Second, uh, the problem is even if they want to have IT talent on their side, even if we, they want to afford IT talent, of course, it is unaffordable for SMEs, but let's say in a hypothetical situation, even if they can afford, the problem is that these IT talent or these IT professionals do not aspire to work for SMEs. They aspire to work with large enterprises. They think that their capabilities, their uh, experience uh, can be well utilized when the IT is being used as a larger scale. They uh, do not derive job satisfaction when they are put to work on a very small scale IT usage. And that is true. Everybody wants challenges. Everybody wants personal growth. Everybody wants personal learning. So uh, this was a disconnect. You know, SMEs were forced to adopt IT and IT talent was not easily available to them. And that is where we thought that this is a gap and we can design a product which is very simple to use so that uh, even a moderate or below average IT talent can deploy that particular product. It is easy for SME to understand and it is very simple to own for an SME. It is affordable also. So with this vision, we started this company and uh, everything went well in the first four years. Uh, we uh, designed our pilot prototype. We patented few technologies which we used in that particular pirate, uh, pi uh, uh, pilot prototype. And then came the Eure Eureka moment. Let me describe that. In year 2010-11, uh, we came across uh, two things. Uh, one was uh, an initiative by Department of Science and Technologies, which was, uh, uh, which was to support indigenous Indian technologies which have mass impact. And another was power of ideas by Times of India. So that basically uh, these two contests which we came across, we thought that let us participate in these contests. We uh, contested for India Innovates Growth Program 2011. And that was uh, about, uh, you know, supporting Indian companies who have uh, uh, Indian technologies who have IPR and it has mass impact. Now, how do how could we prove that our technology, the prototype which we developed for SME was a mass impact? It was not so difficult because as I explained, uh, MSME board had um, uh, in those days 36 million SMEs. So somehow uh, our point that SMEs are integral part of economy, they are the backbone of the economy, and they can be affected with the challenges of IT adoption. And if they get any solution to overcome those challenges of IT adoption, it could be a mass impact technology. And that is how our pilot prototype of black box, which was absolutely in software. Right now you see black box in a hardware form, but when we started, we never had hardware in our vision. We only had software and that particular pilot prototype of software was recognized as India Innovates Growth Program uh, technology provider. And we got gold medal cash prize. And also we were offered uh, seed funding by government of India. Uh, and that is how uh, this particular company got seed funded. And after that, uh, we were also offered that uh, because we want to scale up this particular company, uh, Indian Institute of Management Ahmedabad, IIM Ahmedabad, which is one of the most premier management institutes, you know, they agreed to incubate us uh, because most of us, uh, the founders, uh, did not have a scale up experience. You know, we were more on technical side, we were more on operations side. So uh, that is how our Eureka moment uh, came. Uh, and uh, we actually got this pilot prototype, uh, which won gold medal in India Innovates Growth Program as a mass impact technology. It was a recognition for us. So we were so motivated and uh, we thought that we would be now um, fine tuning our prototype and make it as a commercial product and sell it in the MSME. We dreamed that uh, we are selling millions of copies of our software. And that was how uh, we thought that we will progress. Now, uh, let me start with our failure story. This was our success story. This was the most ideal thing which could happen to a 
a startup now what has happened why why we had a failure story we had a failure story number one our form of product offering was software so when we went to sell the product to the sme segment we really could not sell the product for few reasons and i'll tell you our form of product was not only software it was on cloud when we started this particular venture our form of a product was software and that software was even not on premise we thought that we will install that software on cloud and we will give that cloud software to our sme customers so it was like a security as a service or data protection as a service so that was a vision we had in 2008 and we never thought of on premise deployment we never thought of hardware and our offering was simple software installed on our cloud sliced to different msmes as per their requirements and they pay as they go so soon with our failure story we realized that we were very very much ahead of time you know now everybody is talking about cloud now everybody is talking about uh, software as a service but in those days we miserably failed. No, there was no taker for our kind of software which was installed on the cloud. You know, there were a few reasons. Number one, in those days, software had no value. You know, in in the in the minds of MSMEs, you know, because piracy was so rampant, few MSME owners even did not know that they were using pirated software. And they thought that a pirated so a software CD, not a pirated software CD, a software CD can be just for 100 rupees and they get everything, Windows, Windows 10, um, Windows, not 10, it was Windows uh, XP, Windows Server 2003 and whatnot. So piracy was rampant, so there was no perceived value of software and our product was a software. Second is uh, because our product was offered on, in, uh, or on cloud, it essentially required internet. And in those days, internet was expensive. In those days, internet was not as good as it is right now. We did not have 4G, we did not have 5G, we, we hardly started with some broadband, you know, and uh, these lines were extremely expensive. So the cost of ownership of our technology was very high because we were giving software, we were providing it on cloud. So we wanted our customers to invest or expand on internet, uh, or to expand on internet uh, 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 connectivity, and then they could use our product. So that was another point why we failed. And one more point, uh, which we never realized, we never imagined in our uh, dreams was about apprehensions towards cloud in those days. In those days, I'm talking about the time before demonetization. I'm talking about time before GST, you know. Uh, in those days, uh, India was heavy on uh, parallel economy, number two economy. And we realized that most of the businesses were reluctant to put their data on the cloud uh, because they thought that their data could be accessed by someone and maybe whatever is their involvement um, in uh, number one, number two transactions would be, you know, uh, open for all. So these reasons we really failed. And this actually narrates our failure story. We started with a software product where piracy was very, very rampant and nobody had a value of a software and we wanted to charge for the software. We wanted to offer that software on cloud when internet was so expensive and uh, 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 we wanted people to expand on very expensive internet just to be able to use our product. And we wanted users or our customers to put their data on the cloud in the times when there were so many number one, number two transactions with most of the businesses and they did not want to do it. And these were the three lessons we learned. And uh, this is how uh, our failure story happened. And then we decided that, okay, let's correct all these things. So first thing we did was we invested millions on hardware. So first we developed the hardware. We loaded our software on the hardware. We put that particular software on the hardware and named it as a black box. And then this black box was installed on premise. Currently, 95% of our installations are on premise. And actually, we solved this problem and 
actually turned this failure story in a great success story. So first we developed the hardware. So now there was something tangible uh, in the hands of our customer. So he was not paying for the software, he was paying for the hardware. Second, uh, this particular hardware was on premise. So he did not have to use internet to access that. And uh, still SMEs are mostly concentrated uh, in single office or multiple offices. Uh, of course, COVID has changed this mindset, but I'm talking about long back before COVID. And third, they were assured that their data is lying with them, whether number one data, number two data, and that is lying with them. So there are no risk to um, of, of the expose, expose, exposure of that particular data. So this is how our failure story happened. And this is how we tried to turn it into a success story. So hardware offered on premise made um, made this a big success. So this is about uh, our failure story. Uh, before I uh, go to the next uh, level, I would like to uh, ask Prasanna to uh, take up the poll, please. Yeah, Prasanna, are you taking the poll? So we see that 53% of the uh, attendees feel that DLP is complicated and 47% say it is no. So basically, uh, let us understand whom did we keep in mind uh, um, while designing this particular product. And let me tell you, when we started this particular, uh, um, selling this particular product, we hardly had 20 features. Now we have 100 plus features. So all these features are developed in collaboration with our customers. You know, we came to know some challenge. We came to know that there is a scope of simplifying something and we did that. So that is how this particular technology is being developed. So for us, you know, who is our customer persona, you know, for whom we have designed this particular product. So ideally it is manufacturing organization which uses ERP and many softwares for after management of operations management, architect or construction industry who use AutoCAD kind of software, design and engineering industry who use uh, SOLIDWORKS and that kind of 3D studio kind of uh, software, biotech and pharmaceuticals who use many analytics uh, software, stock brokers who have a lot of real time transactions and they use very complicated uh, uh, back office software and automation and instrumentation who have a lot of programming, software coding, PCB designing, and they use, um, so what is common among them? The common among them, the common thing among them is the data. They have some IPR on their data. They have some obligation on their data. For example, there is an auto ancillary manufacturer who is supplying uh, automotive parts to let's say Tesla or to Mercedes. When these companies share their designs to manufacture the parts, they want the vendor who is going to supply that to submit a non-disclosure 
agreement or confidentiality agreement and they want that vendor adheres to that strictly so this is how um, they have a data which needs to be protected sometimes an architect who has his own creative designs and he doesn't want that those designs are taken away by any junior or any insider so every everybody listed in this vertical uh, value their data more than money the data is something which can impact their business continuity it can also impact their competitiveness our target segment for which this particular product is designed is 5 crore to 100 crore turnover companies 10 computer users to 150 computer users company and what are the use cases as i have given some uh, examples is compliance obligation you know a uh, pharma company uh, they have to comply with lot of information security uh, related uh, um, compliances so the first use case is compliance obligation for which we have designed this product to avoid competitive exploitation just imagine um, a company has its own product and that product has a design on which it is being manufactured and some competitor takes that particular design or a company is participating in tender and tender bid is leaked to the competitor and competitor uh, bids lower than that so competitive exploitation can also be one of the reason why this particular product can be useful another is business continuity assurance when this data is lost maybe because of deletion maybe because of ransomware maybe because of disaster organization will lose business continuity and in order to maintain business continuity which is a use case this kind of product can be utilized then cost minimization this product is a unique product which is basically a single hardware single software product so when you want to design a standard it infrastructure you need to deploy many it components and those components could be file server mail server firewall uh, storage domain controller endpoint security vpn uh, server and what not so all these products are different software different uh, hardware and then that requires the consumer to use um these products in licensed manner so there could be client access license there could be rdp client access license so when we create a standard it infrastructure it costs a lot you know in terms of hardware in terms of licensed software this product being a um, single hardware single software integrated product it costs at almost one third compared to the total cost of all those components and it is very very simple because it has single dashboard you don't have to manage 8 9 10 different dashboards then it talent affordability and retention challenges so smes have these challenges uh, and you you will all agree with me so here uh, um, because it talent might not aspire to work with small and medium enterprise you know they should not be deprived of their information security rights so this product is developed on this particular principle so this product can be managed by a below average it professional and it can because it is simple and it can give the similar result to the enterprise which owns it so these are the use cases of uh, black box and that is how i thought that uh let me uh, dis- uh, l- let me discover this customer persona in this webinar uh, so that everyone would know how this product was designed and let me tell you this vertical is the most affected vertical when it is about it adoption it is about data loss leakage and theft and this particular product is doing extremely well uh, in this vertical because it is designed specific to these verticals specific to their pain points and it solves them um very accurately yeah before we move to the next uh, uh, part i would request prasanna to run the poll please
So here we see the uh, results of the poll. Um, say fifty-four percent of the people are manufacturing coming from manufacture, uh, and the attendees are not belonging to any other segment. Of course, manufacturing segment would uh, include few of these segments, and others means forty-six percent of the people as they are IT professionals. They are from IT background. So now uh, we'll move to the next part of this particular uh, webinar. So let us understand some less known features of black box. So when we talk about um, less known features, um, we were pioneer and we came up with the concept of device hardening. Device hardening was earlier and now also being done by domain controller. You know, you have some uh, domain controller, you get the system in the domain and then control that particular device or give rights to that particular device as desired. For MSMEs, it is too expensive. For MSMEs, they have to invest in server hardware, then they have to invest in Microsoft server license, then they have to invest in client access licenses. Then they need somebody who is very expert and certified by Microsoft who can create a domain, configure the domain and harden the devices. So it is an expensive affair for an MSME. It is not simple to. So we came up with a device hardening, which is very innovative. We never, uh, we are hardening the devices in work group environment. We don't have to take the devices in domain environment. So there is no need of a server hardware. There is no need of a operating system of the server. And there is no need of client access license. And of course, while you are using work group environment, you are also not obligated to buy professional version of Windows. You can do away with single language, which is the, where there is a cost difference and you can save that cost also. So device hardening basically does five things. One, it withdraws admin rights from the users. Two, it decides which applications the user will use. Three, it will decide which folders the user will use. Four, uh, which whether user will be entitled for the local resources, like whether he will be able to save the data on the local computer or whether he will directly save the data on the uh, central storage. And five, VPN, virtual private network, whether user will access the data from local area network or from remote. So device hardening is something uh, which we are a pioneer of and uh, we have really solved the problem with very, very cost effective approach. Second is data restore confidence. Now, this device hardening forcefully centralizes the data on the central location. So there is no way your data is scattered. And when your data is not scattered, you are more confident about its backup. Let me give you an example. You have 25 users. If those 25 users are saving data on those 25 devices, which they use, computers, you have to take the backup of those 25 computers to be confident about data restore. It is not feasible, practical, to take the backup of 25 computers every day. So until and unless you want that those users will be able to save the data on the central storage, and then you will be obligated to take the backup of only that central storage. You cannot be confident about the backup. So this device hardening forces the user to save the data on the central storage only. And by doing that, it exempts the organization to take the backup of all 25 computers. And we have to take the backup of only one computer or one device, which is black box. Again, it happens automatic in that. So it simplifies it and the data restore confidence increases like anything. Now we know that our data is not scattered so we can restore our data. And that is how data restore confidence can increase like anything. Then email shadowing, this is the most I would say unknown feature of black box. See, when you route your emails through black box, it does one more thing in addition to the vigilance of the emails. We all know that black box does a lot of email vigilance, but we most of us don't know that black box also shadows the email. So when you route your emails through black box, of course, it applies vigilance policy. At the same time, it shadows the emails user-wise and date-wise. 
So tomorrow, if I'm working in your organization and I have uh, deleted all of my emails before, uh, you know, uh, before quitting the job, you can actually restore all emails of Vishal Shah from specific date to specific date to some other user because Blackbox does email shadowing. So which is, this is very, very important feature, which is not known to most of us. Then DNS splitter, this is again, it is not known. Uh, we, most of us are using very standard email systems like um, Google or um, O365. Now we pay good money for that. We pay approximately two to 3000 rupees per year per user. Now Blackbox has DNS splitting technology, which is a good old technology, which is modernized and it works just as it requires. So what it does is that let's say you have you have 50 Gmail accounts. So you are paying 2,500 rupees per user per year. So maybe you are paying 1,25,000 rupees on yearly basis. So present value of that expense is very high because it is a recurring expense. Now, let's say you have black box DNS splitter. What you can do is you can have one account in which you can create multiple aliases. So you'll pay for only one account to Google. That one account will be downloaded by black box. It will scan through its emails. It does it very fast. And then it will allocate a user's email in user's mailbox on black box. So when your user is downloading the emails, he will download only his emails. So let's say we have created 25 aliases or 50 aliases in one account. So all 50 users mails are going to one account. So you cannot give access of that one account to all those 50 users because you are concerned about the privacy. You want that user should re read his emails or her emails only, not others. So Blackbox makes it possible. Everybody's emails, all 50 users' mails are in one account. Blackbox downloads it. Then it delivers to 50 different uh, users' account as for the from address, to address, CC address, whatever. And then the particular user of the Blackbox can see his emails only. So this is called DNS splitter technology. And that is also available and you can save huge cost. And most of our black box customers are. Then happy hours. Most of us uh, know that internet can be controlled by a content filter. Now these content filters are not accurate. And that's the reason there is always a data leakage. There is always a threat. This happy hours is a zero trust feature. You know, we believe in zero trust. It is zero, zero trust. This happy hours is a zero trust. What it does is it gives specific URLs access to the users. Users cannot access anything else. And then it gives an option of on-demand internet. So let's say user wants to access something which is not allowed to him by the organization. Then user can opt for on-demand internet. In that on-demand internet, he can go to any website. But as soon as he opts for on-demand internet, the data of the enterprise is isolated completely. So during the on-demand internet, the user can go to any website, complete his research. He can do his business development, but the data will not be available so that he cannot leak. So happy hours is a zero trust policy where it facilitates the use of websites to the user as required by the enterprise. It also facilitates, facilitates the use of internet by the users as required by the users. But while it is being used as required by the users, the data is isolated. And that is how this happy hours is a feature which is not very well known. Then we have a dual profiling system, uh, a feature. This particular feature is very important feature. Most of the SMEs cannot afford to give away laptops to their employees. Many a times their employees use their own laptop or desktop while they're working remotely. At that time, SME is always worried about the data residing on that particular user's laptop or desktop. So Blackbox has a dual profiling feature. Of course, it is called Blackbox Duo. 
this is a technology it creates two different profiles on the computer system owned by the employee in one profile he can do his personal work another profile he can do his professional work and while he is in professional work all the restrictions policies of the enterprise like uh, restricting usb drive vigiling the emails controls on the internet vpn all these policies will only apply when the employee is working in professional session and that is called dual profiling personal and professional this can also be done on the mobiles of the employees then one more uh, thing which very few people know is application virtualization so most of the smes use legacy applications and they want that those legacy applications can be used by their branch offices or by the remote users and many a times they use team viewer or any desk or such uh, free software which are not secure which are very slow or they use terminal server and rdp client which is very expensive on capex and opex both black box can actually virtualize your applications and deliver it to your remote user again it is not about remote desktop so it is very resource light remote desktop is very resource intensive um yesterday i was interacting with a customer who was using remote desktop and terminal server for remote access to his applications tally and he had invested in a server which had a ram of 512 gb 512 gb can you imagine so it is so resource intensive while black box application virtualization software can run on very very lightweight operating systems like windows 10 and very very less memory and this application virtualization can really make big difference for msmes who want to give access of their applications to the users either to branch offices to depot or to uh, uh, the work from home users then we have one more feature which is always the last uh, uh, um, last point in our demonstration which is playback office or productivity monitoring so what black box agent does it also captures the screenshot of every user's desktop while the user is working at 30 second 1 minute whatever interval we have configured and then it uploads it on the black box and you can configure it to retain for 30 days 40 days 50 days whatever so in case you want to monitor someone's productivity in case you want to investigate some fraud you actually can play back what was happening on that particular computer and it is very very important and crucial feature and it is an unknown feature of black box then integrated power management system this particular feature is known to the people only when they buy the black box black box is bundled with its own battery you know we have a synced ups with the black box so when there is a power fluctuation or power failure this particular battery will keep your black box running not for your users to work on but for saving the files and shutting down the device so there won't be any hard shutdown and that is very important for any memory intensive device which is black box so this is also very unknown feature people sometimes find that this hardware is very expensive but all these components are inbuilt in that and there is a reason it is not expensive you are getting more things and you are getting more things for which you are paying for so the benefits are low hardware and software cost because it is a very single kind of operating system single hardware you can be very confident about business continuity plan because black box has many patented technologies to protect your data from deletion ransomware or disaster you can very well have a policy implementation and you can have vigilance of email you have byod security as i have explained in dual profiling you can have bandwidth frugal application for remote access as i have explained in application virtualization and you can have playback office that screen capture facility so the value it derives and that is the key to the success of black box is it saves 55% of the savings on hardware cost it saves 70% saving on the software it saves 70% on email subscription remember dns splitter and it saves 50% on bandwidth because it is bandwidth frugal we transmit only keyboard strokes and mouse clicks we do not transmit the data in application virtualization so this is how uh, these are the less known features of the black box 
Uh, before we uh, move to the next slide, I would request Prasanna to launch the poll, please. So as we see the results on the screen, um, backup of enterprise data residing on remote computer is very important. So all the, all the things which are uh, very important and the last, which is the seventh one, do you think user can leak or steal enterprise data through e internet or personal cloud storage drives? 20% of the people feel that it is not possible. Yeah, so this particular poll, you know, um, gives us lots, lots of insights. We'll move to the next slide now. Now let me talk about some patents, IPR and hidden technologies driving this black box. So as I told you that without using domain or domain controller, we are actually hardening the device the same way a domain or domain controller would harden it. And that technology is patented as device hardening technology, device hardening technology for do without domain controller. And uh, this is something which is a patented technology and that is what we call as autocratic centralization where user is forced to save the data where he's supposed to. We control the save dialog box of every software installed on user. So whenever he saves the data of a Word file, Excel file, AutoCAD file, he is given the options which are designed or defined by the uh, administrator of the system. And he cannot scatter the data anywhere other than those folders. So it gives autocratic centralization. Another is data isolation technology. As I have explained that a black box has something called, uh, uh, black box has something called uh, uh, on-demand internet, you know, on-demand internet. So that is something which is, uh, um, we call it as, uh, when user goes to internet, um, on-demand internet, he is basically, his data is completely isolated. So that is patented in the name of data isolation technology. So it pulls uh, the internet and it finds that it is on-demand, unrestricted internet, it automatically isolates the data. Then we have primary and hidden, tech, hidden chamber technology. Uh, this technology is very useful in recovering the data after the ransomware attack is successful. There can be a zero day on which a new ransomware is launched. And when the new ransomware is launched, um, it is possible that uh, the antivirus or firewall cannot detect it and it might affect the systems. And if, if it affects the system, what to do? So there your primary hidden te te chem uh, chamber technology helps a lot. Here primary chamber is used for the user's data and hidden chamber, which is logically disconnected from primary chamber, contains different versions of the data and ransomware cannot reach to hidden chamber because it is logically disconnected from the primary chamber. And there is a process called DCDC, -DC, disconnect, connect, disconnect, connect, which is also part of this particular patent. Uh, will make sure that hidden chamber is never exposed uh, to any scanning of the ransomware. So this is how if organization uh, is affected by the ransomware, uh, they can get the uh, previous version of the data and this particular primary chamber hidden chamber technology 
bit locks the data which is not frequently used so the data which is old data which is not frequently used even it cannot be affected by the ransomware because ransomware also needs to change the data in order to encrypt it and that is how um, it makes big sense dual profiling i have explained uh, you can manually create these two profiles but we hold the patent for automatically creating those profiles then bandwidth optimization in uh, remote access again we have ipr for this uh, where uh, we transmit keyboard mouse uh, clicks and uh, we have few things where we don't require terminal services also um, so that is how uh, these patents are powering black box then we have email header parsing also which is very much used for uh, saving the cost on uh, you know that particular dns splitter so when the email is received from a single account receiving emails for a lot of e users we have email header parsing technology so that it determines that oh this email is for vishal oh this email is for prasanna oh this email is for rajendra and that's how it then segregates parses the header segregates those emails in respective users folders and that is how you save money on your online mailbox and you have complete isolation of your emails in your local mailbox so it imparts a lot of practicality and we believe that um, uh, we believe in the principle of maximum controls minimum monitoring means this particular system is designed which does not generate a lot of monitoring uh, monitoring uh, triggers you know it generates less monitoring trigger because it controls most of the things and when most of the things are in control you don't have to really monitor it um, i have explained on demand internet uh, access blind carbon copy intercept is also very inter interesting you know none of the email systems which i have seen you know still does it you know i don't know why but blind carbon copy can be used to steal the data let's say i am sending a very confidential report to my board members and i am sending blind carbon copy to my competitor my board members while reading that report are not going to realize that it is sent to some competitor you know and the competitor is reading that email and that can be easily done by blind carbon copy so black box intercepts blind carbon copy also as i have explained it has screen capture data uh, dns splitter data deletion yeah these two things and data deleter identifier so black box has a very practical use of technology uh, see when data is deleted there could be two possibilities one data is intentionally deleted two data is accidentally deleted data is accidentally deleted no problem when it is intentionally deleted organization would know would want to know who has done that so black box has a delete data deleted identifier not only that but also it has all file operation logs also then you have inbound only usb it is very practical you know uh, most of the technology is either enable or disable usb what about digital signatures what about license dongles what about a genuine requirement of using usb to invert the data there is a construction company the user photographs the site progress of the building and he wants to enter in his system so he has to invert the data from pen drive how is it possible so black box has a unique feature which has inbound only usb so you can allow user to use usb he can only invert the data he cannot outward the data even if you are allowing him to outward the data you will get the report email shadowing i have already explained it is very practical if user deletes the emails no problem you don't have to worry about it if user's pst is corrupt no problem you can restore that user's data date wise you know uh and really um, overcome that so this is about uh, the hidden hidden technologies uh, uh, inside the black box now we will see the trend setters you know uh, these are very important and that is the last part of my um, uh, work you know uh, it is basically uh, about our customer first policy we are the only company which offer buyback of the product normally when you buy a server for let's say 2 lakhs of rupees and after 3 years you go to your server vendor and ask what will be the what will be the resale value of that server you will not get more than 25000 rupees here in black box we offer buyback to every customer of black box 
and that is between the three year to five year window after the purchase of the black box. So if your black box is older than three years and is not older than five years, you can upgrade to new black box. And do you know what you are going to get for your old black box? You are going to get 100%. So let's say you have bought a black box at 2 lakhs of rupees. After three years, you want and 2 lakhs of rupees black box, which is let's say uh, uh, 20 user black box. Now you, after three years, you want to buy a 50 user black box. And um, that is 4 lakhs of rupees. You pay only 2 lakhs of rupees. Your old black box will be taken back by us. We will pay 2 lakhs of rupees against that 4 lakhs. So you will end up paying only 2 lakhs of rupees. And that would be, and that would be, that would be complete 100% realization, resale value of your black box. Not only that, we have data migration also covered in that. From old black box, our engineers will migrate the data to the new black box. We also have five-year hardware warranty. By default, it is three-year. You can buy two more year of hardware warranty on the black box. We are the people who provide standby device. Let's say there is any problem and the device is in under hard hardware warranty. You will get the standby device so you do not lose your business continuity. Now, the most important hidden facts is appreciating product. It is an appreciating product. Normally, every electronic product depreciates. This appreciates because we add a lot of features in that. So today you buy black box for 20 features. Within two years, it would be loaded with 20 more features automatically. So this is an appreciating product. And that is the reason price of the black box increases every year. After 31st March, we are going to increase the price of the black box by 14%, 14%. And the features which will be there in that price after revising by increasing 14% are the same features which are there in current black box. That means those who are buying the black box today will get all the features and they will not pay that 14%. And those who buy it next year will pay 14% more. So those who bought it today, the product is appreciated by 14%. We have a knowledge center where you can ask any question about IT. We have so many SME focused uh, webinars like this. The effective cost of black box, if you derive for a five year usage is just 200 rupees per month per user, 200 rupees per month for, per user. So it is less than a cost of T of a user, or it is less than, you know, a, a cost of, a mobile connection for a user every year, every month. So let's say you buy a black box for 3 lakhs of rupees. For four years, you pay the maintenance of 30,000 rupees. So total cost is 4 lakh 20,000 rupees. And if that particular black box is for 25 users, just we calculate it, it would not be more than 200 rupees per user per month. So over a fire period, it gives exceptional value. We also process the government subsidy of interest cost and black box is eligible for that. Where you buy the black box, you pay by credit card and you will pay equal installments without any interest. And whatever interest is charged by the bank, it will be processed by us as a government subsidy and it can be um, availed by you. So you can also uh, be comfortable on buying this product on CapEx and paying it like an OPEX. We also have an academy where black box certification can happen and you can nominate your IT team for going for black box certification. And uh, that is a community which is building up. They uh, install black box for us. They support black box customers for us. And uh, they suggest a lot of uh, quality ideas uh, to enhance the product. So these are the trend setting policies. And I thought that these are not very well known. We have not been very good on marketing on these particular points. So we thought that let us have a webinar and let me convey these things to all of you. Yeah, Prasanna, can we launch the poll, please? Uh, all the launch, all the polls have been done, sir. The last one was the holistic perception. It's completed. Uh, should I share the results again? 
Uh, no, that's fine. Uh, I thought there was any one more code. So this is all about uh, knowing about black box. This is all about unknown facts about black box, including how the black box is, uh, um, you know, designed, where we failed, how we succeeded, uh, what are the features, what are the patterns, who is our ideal customer, and what are our policies. So this is all about it. Uh, we have already stretched our webinar time. So we'll have a two to five minutes of question answer session. And after that, we'll conclude person. So you can raise your hand or uh, ask your question. Uh, I would be happy to. Yeah, Prasanna, you can conclude the session. Thank you, sir. Uh, sir, someone has raised the uh, hand. Yeah, uh, one minute. One yes, Mr. Mahantesh, you can speak, please. You can unmute yourself and speak. Uh, hello, sir. Uh, uh, my question to you is, uh, like, uh, uh, when we have a group of companies, so how can we integrate uh, 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 by using the black box? Right, so if you have group of companies, uh, you can, uh, so are they spread across locations? Yeah, locations. Yeah, so in that case, you have two options. One option is that you can put the black box on data center or cloud. Okay. So it can be accessed from anywhere and it creates a private cloud for yourself. Mm -hmm. So this is the best way of doing it. Another way is you can uh, host a black box at one location um, in any of your offices, make a small data center, make it online on internet and connect everyone else by MPLS. Okay. okay. And my second question to you is like, uh, uh, okay, uh, let me check. So what, what is uh, reliability? The, how, how, how uh, like, you know, you said the guarantee, warranty is for five years. Okay, so is there any uh, uh, history that uh, your black box fails uh, uh, and what is the percentage of it? Right. So let me let me tell you, uh, warranty is not for five years. Warranty is for three years by default. You can buy two years extended warranty. Mm -hmm. and now uh, there are three things. This black box is built, you know, very very uh, ruggedly. And uh, it, it is very, very reliable. And we also have a bundled UPS with black box, which is uh, tuned with black box so that if there is any problem with the power, it will shut down the black box. So that is one aspect of it. Second aspect, when black box is under warranty, Sinerslop provides standby device. So in case there is any problem, you will get the standby device and you can very well continue your business. That is another assurance. And third is there is another product line in black box which gives redundancy. So that is called twin devices, twin prime T or twin turbo T. So where you get set of two devices, two identical devices, one device fails, the another device automatically takes over. How about the data transfer? So it's already integrated. Uh, uh... Yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, it is. Uh, let's say one device fails, another device starts in less than single second. You know, and all the data on the first device is already there on the another device. It is kind of high availability. Okay. Okay, okay. okay. sir, you said uh, uh, this product is uh, limited, limited for one one hundred fifty users that you designed for. No, no, no. It is not limited for 150 users. Uh, we have majority of the customers who fall into 10 users to 150 users. Okay. And uh, so uh, there is no limit for the number of users. So ready-made models are up to 300 users. Okay. And after that, we can customize the models. Mm -hmm. And we also have software-only version. So when there is a large deployment, mm -hmm. uh, the company might have already invested in the hardware. So we provide software of black box on their hardware at a large uh, scale deployment so that they can save money on hardware. Okay. And uh, related to uh, the power failure, you said like uh, uh, it already has a built-in uh, UPS. Okay. And, but it, it, it may not give a long, uh, 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 long backup. Okay. So 
it uh, uh, so the black box it doesn't it take it takes care like uh, it will not go for hard uh, shutter correct okay so, yeah that is the only purpose there is the only purpose so that your data is safe okay so how about the user has opened multiple files and uh, uh, so it automatically saves uh, it takes care of automatically saving yes yes okay. it it saves automatically okay sir okay okay thank you so much welcome sir okay. yeah we have uh, mr nirav just a moment yeah mr nirav you can also uh, uh, unmute yourself and ask the question Yeah, Mr. Nirav, you need to unmute yourself and ask. Yeah, I th I think uh, Mr. Nirav is on mute. Yeah, Prasanna, you can conclude the session in case uh, Mr. Nirav asks the question. We'll take it up at last. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you for such an uh, insightful event uh, session on Black Box. I th thank everyone for attending the session. I hope you have learned and enjoyed the presentation. Please fill the survey form, which you will get at the end of the session to give us your valuable feedback. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you all very much. Uh, uh, Mr. Nero, uh, I think you are not uh, able to mute, unmute yourself. You can email your question to us. We will be surely answering that. Thank you all. Thank you very much.